Hey YouTube, welcome back to my channel. Today is day 14 of Vlogmas, and we're going to read chapter 14 in Luke, and then we're going to talk about what my Bible says about the chapter. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you for your word. I thank you for the time that we get to spend in your word. Allow us to grow and allow us to know you better. In your name I pray, amen. One Sabbath, when he went in to eat at the house of one of the leading Pharisees, they were watching him closely. There in front of him was a man whose body was swollen with fluid. In response, Jesus asked the law experts and the Pharisees, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath or not? But they kept silent. He took the man, healed him, and sent him away. And to them he said, which of you whose son or ox falls into a well will not immediately pull him out on the Sabbath day? They could find no answer to these things. He told a parable of those who were invited when he noticed how they would choose the best places for themselves. When you are invited by someone to a wedding banquet, don't recline at the best place because a more distinguished person than you may have been invited by your host. The more who invited, the one who invited both of you may come and say to you, give your place to this man and then in humiliation you will proceed to take the lowest place. But when you are invited, go and recline in the lowest place so that when the one who invited you comes, he will say to you, friend, move up higher. You will then be honored in the presence of all the other guests, for everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and the one who humbles himself will be exalted. He also said to the one who had invited him, When you give a lunch or a dinner, don't invite your friends, your brothers, or your sisters, your relatives, or your rich neighbors, because they might invite you back, and you would be repaid. On the contrary, when you host a banquet, invite those who are poor, maimed, lame, or blind, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you, for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. When one of those who reclined at the table with him heard those things, he said to him, Blessed is the one who will eat bread in the kingdom of God. Then he told him, A man was giving a large banquet and invited many. At the time of the banquet, he sent his servant to those who were invited. Come, because everything is now ready. But without exception, they all began to make excuses. The first one said to him, I have, brought, I have bought a field, and I must go out and see it. I ask you to excuse me. Another one said, I have brought, bought five yoke of oxen, and I'm going to try them ask, out. I ask you to excuse me. And another said, I just got married, and therefore I am unable to come. So the servant came back and reported these things to his master. Then in anger, the master of the servant told his master of the house told his servant go out quickly into the streets and alleys of the city and bring in here the poor maimed blind and lame master the servant said what you ordered has been done and there's still room then the master told the servant go out into the highways and hedges and make them come in so that my house may be filled for i tell you not one of these people those people who were invited will enjoy my banquet now great crowds were traveling with him, so he turned and said to them, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his own father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, and even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not bear his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you, wanting to build a tower, doesn't first sit down and calculate the cost to see if he has enough to complete it? Otherwise, after he has laid the foundation and cannot finish it, all the, onlooker, on, all the onlookers will begin to ridicule him, saying this man started to build and wasn't able to finish. Or what king going to war against another king will for, not first sit down and decide if he is able with 10,000 to oppose the one who comes against him with 20,000? If not, while the other is still far off, he sends a delegation and asks for terms of peace. In the same way, therefore, every one of you who does not renounce all his possessions cannot be my disciple. Now salt is good, but if salt should lose its taste, how will it be made salty? If it isn't fit for the soil or for the, fam for the manure pile, then they throw it out. Let anyone who has ears listen. So for verses 1 through 6, it says, On the second mention of the Sabbath, Luke described the healing of a man whose body was swollen with fluid. This condition is described with Greek. 
I can't pronounce that, but the word means dropsy or edema. This text does not indicate whether this man was an invited guest or an intruding man seeking help or someone planted by the Pharisees to entrap Jesus. The matter of healing on the Sabbath was further complicated with the obvious ele elevation of rituals and traditions above concern for the well-being of people. Again, Jesus' wisdom left the religious leaders speechless. So verses 7 through 24, this scene is followed by Jesus' teachings on humility, followed by the parable of the large banquet in 16 through 24. Those who were invited, the Jews, made excuses for not coming in 17 and 18. Therefore, those who gathered at this great table were the most unlikely, the poor, maimed, blind, and lame, in verse 21. Humiliation is often the result of a lack of humility, humility in verse 9 which is essential for entering God's kingdom there is no coercion in the strong invitation make them come in rather than rather there is strong persuasion for those who might feel hesitant to come to the great banquet because of their own personal unworth unworthiness in verse 25 through 35 parables recorded only in Luke form the heart of this section Jesus emphasizes that the cost of discipleship is high. Those who desire to enter the kingdom ought to reflect deeply on the sacrifice that is necessary in order to do so, from verse 27. He, must, he also gave stern warnings to any who would use family responsibilities as an excuse to abandon a radical commitment to him. Jesus did not suggest dishonoring parents or neglecting family responsibility responsibilities love for jesus should be so great that the love of family would seem like hatred by comparison all other loyalties are subordinate to your devotion to christ sometimes to follow christ means giving up even the most precious precious earthly relationships ultimately you must be willing to lay down your life for christ since to bear your own cross was an expression indicating death in verse 27 Only those who have committed themselves to Christ and who are pervert, preserved only the, over the long term are truly saved. Here the text does call for giving up all. Genuine believers give up ownership and control of their lives and possessions and instead becomes God, become God's steward of these. Christ must be set above everyone and everything in a person's life. Nothing less will do. While the cost of following Christ is high... As pointed out in verses 28 through 30, the cost of not following him is higher still in 31 and 32. That's all I have for today. Thank you for watching and tune in tomorrow for day 15. Bye guys.